<clears throat> so here's my, my my story, at least part of it. I uh, joined LinkedIn uh, about four years ago uh, on February 29th of flip year. So it's going to be this Saturday is going to be my uh, first real anniversary. Uh, <clears throat> so I uh, joined in anticipation of uh, well, working on a scale-out solution for uh, Hadoop uh, HDFS name node, uh, but uh, life doesn't happen as we expect, of course, uh, and uh, <clears throat> I guess we fell um, uh, victims of uh, our doing too good job of uh, optimizing uh, the existing uh, name node. So. Uh, here we are uh, running the largest, probably the largest uh, <clears throat> Hadoop cluster in the industry. And this talk will be uh, about uh, um, <clears throat> the latest, uh, uh, the latest uh, uh, project uh, that we did in this uh, direction, namely uh, allowing reads from a standby replica of the name node. So we'll talk about uh, background uh, from um, high availability and HDFS itself. I'll talk about motivation. I'll explain what uh, the consistent read problem and challenges are. Um, <clears throat> and uh, in the end, we'll give some uh, performance uh, uh, numbers uh, from the uh, <clears throat> installation that we have. So in, uh, in distributed system in general and databases in particular, um, uh, high availability is an important feature and uh, usually uh, active passive or uh, master-slave architecture is implemented. There are, of course, other ways to uh, provide high availability like active-active, but it's uh, harder, so the trade-offs uh, it's harder because you need to uh, use those uh, coordination uh, consensus algorithms like Paxos or, or Raft. Uh, it's easier for uh, users, of course. But uh, in HDFS, we have active standby. We call the passive node standby node. And uh, <clears throat> uh, some terminology, terminology here uh, that the uh, uh, Clients or users go to the active node. Uh, they talk to the active node, create files or uh, read files, and uh, active transforms this uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, this uh, update to the standby node through uh, a process called journal tailing. And then standby is used for failover. So when your active fails, uh, standby can uh, take over. And the question we're trying to uh, <clears throat> address is, can this standby replica used as, uh, as a, uh, for, for read requests, right? Uh, um, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it has all the same information, so why, why not uh, uh, use it? Um, Hadoop distributed file system <clears throat> uh, is a non POSIX file system. Uh, it is highly distributed, it is highly scalable. Um, it still has um, um, hierarchical metadata. Uh, the metadata is stored in files and uh, directories, and uh, <clears throat> uh, it's stored in, uh, uh, in a server, in a single server called name node. So uh, <clears throat> with HA, we have uh, one active name node, one, sta uh, one standby node, and uh, journal nodes uh, play the role of uh, uh, distributing journal transactions from active to standby. Uh, all, the, uh, <clears throat> uh, all the data is, uh, uh, all, all the files are represented in the active name node uh, in memory. So uh, naturally, mm, the size of uh, memory of the name node is a scalability factor. Uh, <clears throat> it's a scalability uh, factor because uh, in, in two ways. First is uh, the uh, number of objects, of course. Uh, uh, by objects, we call uh, uh, the sum of uh, files and blocks. 
and directories. Uh, all inodes and blocks uh, are counted as objects. Uh, so the number of objects is one scalability limit. Another is the performance, uh, RPC performance, right? So we, we, we send messages to the active name node, how fast it can process and how many of those requests it can process. Uh, the um, data node layer, uh, <clears throat> data nodes store blocks. So file blocks are uh, split into um, chunks. Uh, files, file data is split, uh, split into chunks of, uh, uh, say, 512 uh, megabyte, and uh, those blocks are stored on data nodes in a very scalable way. So data node layer is uh, quite uh, scalable. And there are, then there are clients that uh, usually run on the same data nodes as a part of uh, uh, MapReduce or Yarn uh, <coughs> jobs, and uh, they access data f first by talking to the name node and getting all the block information and then uh, streaming data from uh, uh, data nodes. And, uh, uh <coughs> So this is our uh, main motivation for uh, uh, for the feature. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this is the graph of uh, growth of uh, one of the largest uh, uh, Hadoop clusters uh, in uh, at LinkedIn from 2015 to 2009. So uh, we see uh, we. <clears throat> On this graph, we uh, sort of normalized the initial state at 2015 at one, and then we traced uh, the growth. Uh, there are three main uh, metrics that we <coughs> track here: space used. Uh, this is, uh, you know, all the all the data that is stored there. Uh, objects. These are files and uh, <coughs> and blocks uh, on on the name node and number of tasks. Tasks, uh, number of tasks uh, uh, essentially uh, defines uh, the load on, on the file system. So we see that uh, it, it's been growing exponentially and in the last year, uh, <clears throat> it looks like storage uh, uh, started winning and uh, growing faster. Uh, okay, pop quiz. So what is the scalability of uh, Hadoop cluster in terms of number of objects? Anybody want to try their suggestions? So of course not unlimited, right? Uh, I mean, there is not, not uh, everything is limited. Uh, at least we have uh, uh, the size of RAM that, that will limit us. Uh, 300 million objects was, uh, uh, about the state when uh, I joined LinkedIn, and uh, that's around where where we were back then. I read recently a blog uh, <clears throat> uh, that uh, HDFS is li limited by seven uh, million objects. We'll see about that. Uh, <clears throat> uh, One billion is probably possible, but we don't know. In any case, so these are uh, some <clears throat> numbers from uh, the uh, Hadoop infrastructure at LinkedIn. Um, uh, all clusters, there are two, two parts of it, all clusters. So we have about 2 billion objects overall and 650 petabyte. Um, the largest clusters is uh, uh, 300 capacity provisioned, 85% of it uh, is used, 250 petabyte, and we recently reached 800 million objects, so that blog was not right. <clears throat> and um, we also measure a uh, number of uh, metadata operations, so we keep it at, uh, at this point at uh, 70,000 uh, RPCs per second on average. So this is the main motivation, the R R R RPC load. So we're not trying with this solution, we're not trying to solve the problem of uh, uh, many objects, but uh, uh, our uh, read load is dominant on the cluster. It's about 95% uh, compared to everything else. else. So if we can move the read load uh, distributed among other nodes like standby nodes then uh, it's going to be a big win 
and uh, uh, essentially st standby uh, is uh, uh, already there. So, but the problem, of course, to do it in a consistent way. So this is the role of uh, the standby node right now. So we're uh, <clears throat> uh, active is publishing all the updates uh, to the namespace to uh, journal and standby tails this journal, uh, jour journal nodes uh, form a <clears throat> uh, consensus, uh, consensus uh, ring uh, and uh, standby uh, uh, pulls uh, pulls this uh, th these transactions and keeps it up to date. Um, we uh, we uh, in order to distinguish standby node from the standby node that uh, is allowed to uh, <clears throat> serve read request, we we call it observer node. So the consistency, in order to uh, get to consistency mo model, uh, we introduced namespace state ID. This is like a monotonically increasing number that is uh, that reflects the journal transaction ID. So at T0, uh, somebody created make dear. It then through journal tailing uh, propagated to uh, observer node uh, or standby node and the T1, something happened uh, and also was propagated. <clears throat> so the consistency model is, uh, <clears throat> uh, I mean, the, the exact uh, definition is there, but uh, uh, in actual, we uh, don't want the client to see the past, right? So if I create something on the active name node and then I go to the standby or observer, uh, I, I may not see that update yet. But uh, <clears throat> uh, consistency requires uh, to access uh, uh, the future, the future or the current state. So there are two types of potential inconsistencies. Uh, in operation. So first, uh, first we call read your own writes. Uh, this is the single client that first goes to the active and creates a file. Then, uh, <clears throat> on the next step, it uh, tries to read this file, but may not f uh, may not find it because uh, the observer uh, uh, state is uh, delayed compared to. <clears throat> compared to active. Uh, the th uh, another type, type two, is third-party communication, or 3PC. In this, uh, in this case, uh, for example, I create a file on the active and shout out to my co colleague in the, uh, in the other room, oh, go check it, right? And he goes and he may not see. So this is the uh, uh, most uh, <clears throat> hard so this third-party communication is that red arrow, arrow in, the, in, in the picture. Uh, this is the hardest of them. Uh, examples. <clears throat> One example we already considered. It's create a file and then try to read it. Uh, two examples with delete operation. Uh, <clears throat> if, uh, if I delete something or modi modify uh, so something, uh, uh, by the same client, that that's going to be uh, read your own rights, right? But if you delete or modify, uh, or modify, but but if I try to read, but somebody modifies or deletes a file, uh, <clears throat> that that's essentially not a problem right now, even right now, because uh, because we do not uh, <clears throat> we do not uh, HDFS does not guarantee the order of operations in some sense. Uh, the important uh, uh, example for uh, third-party communication is uh, job submission. Uh, <clears throat> so essentially, we uh, the client uh, first writes all the job.xml configuration files and the jars into HDFS. Then uh, it uh, tells the node manager, right, the uh, Yarn node manager, to start the job. Uh, after all the files are, are ready. And uh, 
uh, uh, multiple tasks are starting and trying to read those files and uh, this is third party com communication and uh, the, fi the files should be there otherwise the job can fail. So what do we do to solve uh, uh, all those problems? First of all we introduced the last seen state ID uh, on the client size. Uh, <clears throat> on the client size. Uh, it's the same uh, ID that uh, I talked about uh, before. It's monotonically increasing number and it uh, is uh, <clears throat> uh, received by the client from the active name node whenever it goes there. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, the name the active name node will just return the uh, its latest state ID. Uh, that why the, uh, that way the client is uh, kept uh, in sync. Uh, then the client can go to observer node and uh, try to read the file, but observer will reply only when it uh, <coughs> caught up with the state of the client. That way we uh, guarantee that uh, the client never re reads uh, stale data, right? Uh, the same client. And the uh, last state ID, you don't need to send, a, uh, uh, send it as parameter or anything. We incorporate it into the uh, RPC header, so it, it is seamless and uh, transparent to, uh, <coughs> uh, to, the, to, to the client. Uh, one problem was that uh, uh, initially uh, the original implementation of standby node could be very far behind, like uh, two minutes by default, we in our cluster uh, made it eight minutes uh, by default because uh, <coughs> it, with two minutes it creates too, too many small files, uh, journal files. And so uh, the implementation was uh, uh, shipping those journal files uh, 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 to the uh, to the standby or observer, and that's that's why uh, the uh, the delay was. So the first thing we did uh, we implemented uh, fast journaling. Uh, there is a, <clears throat> a quorum based uh, uh, pull process. So essentially, the standby or observer would would go to the journal and. Uh, pull the, tr the latest transactions and uh, we measured uh, the, the, those are uh, <clears throat> measurements we, we did after the implementation uh, that uh, client perceived uh, lag of observer is six milliseconds on average uh, and uh, the average processing time from uh, from the time the request is submitted on active until uh, it is uh, executed on observer uh, is about 25-30 uh, milliseconds. So pretty big win compared to 8 minutes. Uh, <clears throat> and that uh, essentially solved uh, read your own rights. With, uh, uh, for uh, third party communication we introduced a single uh, new uh, API call which is called msync. We already had in Hadoop uh, like hsync call. So this one, uh, metadata sync, uh, it guarantees that uh, uh, the client first goes to active, syncs its state ID with the active, and then goes to, uh, to observer. So in this diagram, uh, <clears throat> the first client, uh, that is me, uh, creates a file, then shouts to the uh, <clears throat> colleague uh, to check the file, and the colleague, being smart, he will first do uh, msync and then go to observer and check the file. So what's the challenge with that? Uh, it's a new API and we have lots of software and applications running on top of Hadoop. Uh, so they would need all to incorporate msync, uh, msync API, which sometimes is not feasible. So we need a lot of things to uh, <clears throat> provide automatic msync without, without changing any applications. First of all, there is a uh, no cost uh, um, automatic startup msync. Uh, during startup, any, when you instantiate the client, it will go to all the name nodes and check their state. And uh, <clears throat> there, is, uh, there is free. Uh, periodic msync, we introduced uh, the, the msync period, so if there is a long-running client, uh, 
that uh, <clears throat> uh, that that runs as a service. It will periodically, by default, one second uh, go to active and uh, syncs with it. Uh, there is always an sync option when you uh, set the period to zero, then every read will go to uh, uh, to active name node first with them sync. Uh, this is uh, a very lightweight uh, <clears throat> operation M sync uh, compared to other reads, uh, so uh, it is possible to use it. And uh, there are also um, different failover proxy providers uh, in HDFS, they're used to failover between uh, active and standby. So we, we, we uh, wrote another observer read proxy provider, which incorporates all the uh, observer read uh, logic. So if you don't want to do that, you can use old uh, proxy providers and that, that will direct you uh, to uh, <clears throat> uh, always to active. Uh, so we essentially reduce the problem of uh, um, uh, using the new msync API to long-running read-only clients because if it writes, then it go to the uh, active anyway, so uh, <clears throat> it will sync. Uh, but long-running read-only clients may uh, sometimes uh, need uh, need to use one of those two options, always in sync or always active. There is a back off. I mean, things happen, bad things happen. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the uh, observer can fall behind. Uh, that happens in at startup or if something is wrong with the network or uh, disks. Uh, so we have an option to back off. Essentially, uh, observer will fail uh, the reads, uh, throw um, a special exception to the client and client will uh, automatically uh, go to active. Uh, <clears throat> configuration. So configure, uh, configuring uh, um, uh, uh, HDFS with observer node is similar to configuring uh, standard HA, uh, <clears throat> HA cluster. Uh, so all the name nodes are list should be listed in uh, the configuration file. We call it HDFS site.xml. And uh, at, in the beginning, all the nodes start automatically in standby state. And then you can transition them dynamically to active or observer. And uh, there is an HA admin command. For configuring clients, we uh, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, the main thing for configuring client is to uh, specify observer read proxy provider. That's uh, that's the thing, that's the pluggable thing that I, I, I talked uh, before, uh, which handles all the logic of uh, switching between uh, all the name nodes on the <clears throat> on the cluster. Uh, so this is the new architecture. So we run with uh, four name nodes now. Our cluster, there is one active and one standby pair uh, for failover. And then we have uh, uh, two nodes that are reserved for observer. Uh, right now we run only one observer, but you can run multiple observers. If, 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 you, if you need to scale read requests, they, they, they will be uh, <clears throat> uh, taking uh, proportionally, proportional amount of read requests. Um, Magic performance. We uh, <clears throat> we track two main uh, uh, two main um, metrics here: RPC queue time average average time and RPC queue num mobs. Essentially, uh, average time uh, is uh, is the <clears throat> is uh, the the time that the uh, that the client request uh, was placed into queue and until it uh, received the response, right? I mean, the response was sent back. So it's a latency. And number of operations is essentially the throughput. So uh, that, that's, that's the picture that we had before we uh, <clears throat> deployed. Uh, consistent reads, uh, and we see that uh, latency was around 50 milliseconds, and uh, uh, throughput was around 60k. So this graph 
shows that uh, we uh, there is a rolling upgrade procedure for for Hadoop. So uh, <clears throat> it's a large cluster. I mean, thousands of machines. You cannot upgrade them in in, in, a, in a single. Uh, uh, in a single step, so gradually introducing you. So th th this was a gradual, uh, gradual upgrade of uh, YARN infrastructure. And you see that the uh, <clears throat> request from the active, green is active and red is uh, observer uh, are coming down and, uh, and the observers start picking up. Uh, <clears throat> so this is intermediate result. We uh, I mean, not everything goes smoothly, right? So we found some performance uh, issues uh, or, or when we put it on the largest cluster. We don't, we didn't see those performance issues before on a smaller scale, and we had to limit only 50% of clients were running. But uh, the benefit was already there. So we had read uh, at five milliseconds, writes at 17 milliseconds, and. Uh, QPS was uh, about 70k, and this is the final. Uh, <clears throat> this is the final um, state as we have today. So uh, reads are uh, one millisecond, uh, writes are 17 milliseconds, and you see that uh, you know majority of uh, workload shifted to uh, to the observer. It changed the color to to blue now. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, and um, uh, active active uh, supports uh, mostly rights and so uh, that's how it is. So this uh, table summarizes the uh, per the comparison between uh, <clears throat> before and after. So I wanted to say a little bit. This is uh, part of open source project. The key, the core team was. Uh, me, Eric, and Chen from, from LinkedIn. Uh, Chow uh, worked uh, wor wor works at Uber and uh, Plumbing at PayPal. Uh, we had contributions from Cloudera, particularly uh, they backported uh, it into the uh, earlier version of Hadoop, and uh, there were people from uh, I, I don't know. How the company is called, but uh, uh, they are from China. Uh, thank you. Questions? So you mentioned that you're using this uh, state um, epoch that you're setting off, or the client is getting from the active to then give to the standby. Um, isn't this introducing an implicit f-sync after every create? Because you do the create, then you have to do any any future stat or read. You would have to wait for all of that to be journaled by the active and then read by the standby. So it seems like there's an implicit f-sync there that you're doing. Right. So uh, when when you do a write, when you do a create, you're essentially doing m-sync. Correct. Was that already the case in HDFS? Yes, but... Uh, uh, <clears throat> before that feature, there were there were, were no reads from standby, okay. and there was no state ID passed seamlessly on the uh, through the client headers, RPC headers. Okay. Yeah, just so I had, I just had a random question uh, early in your deck. You mentioned that the largest um, uh, HDFS cluster uh, file system that you had, and then your, the totals and the largest um, had roughly about 85% uh, percent of the capacity in use. Um, and I was curious if that was an accident, something that you deliberately uh, you know, tried to engineer, and if so, uh, if there were reasons behind that. It's slightly off topic, but I was just curious. Yeah. Uh uh, that's correct. This is uh, uh, this is engineered. We are uh, trying very hard not to go over ninety percent because uh, uh, then replication traffic starts uh, starts to hit the performance of the name node. So uh, whenever we get close to that ninety percent, we'll add, we'll just throw more uh, hardware. 